through the 1850s is a long period of peace um, before war breaks out in Taranaki in March 1860. And that that's really marks a period of a 12 year long series of conflicts that raised throughout the North Island. And these are, are fought between um, Crown forces that include British troops for most of this period, also colonial allies and some, some Māori uh, tribes or members of tribes who, who uh, align themselves with the Crown for their own reasons. So Māori go from being the leading drivers of the New Zealand economy through the 1850s um, to a position of great poverty and in the aftermath of some of these conflicts, there are reports of people dying of starvation. The consequences of that destruction of the economy isn't something that goes away quickly. It lasts for many generations. And combined with that is the impact of land confiscations. Over three million acres of land is confiscated. And so, you know, that, that really destroys many of these communities that were once the beating heart of New Zealand's economy. And so the war opens up these very lucrative lands through much of the central North Island to European settlement, while Māori are marginalised and dispossessed. And the wars, particularly in the 1860s, mark a shift in power, and it's, it really marks the point at which the treaty is thrown out the window for at least the next century or more. And with that, the government is in a position to assert its authority in, in various ways. One example is the introduction of the Native Land Court, which is designed to further um, facilitate the alienation of Māori lands. Another is the establishment of the native school system, which is um, all part of this kind of assimilationist agenda that the Crown has. So, you know, discouraging to children learning te reo and so on. And so the, the wars have a major and lasting consequence for the country as a whole. There are nearly 3,000 casualties as a result of these conflicts mostly Māori, but including some British troops and, and some colonial soldiers as well. People who don't understand that historical context um, don't really understand, you know, things like some of the reasons behind um, the socio-economic circumstances of many Māori people today. I think it's absolutely critical that we engage with this history and we acknowledge the New Zealand wars as um, a significant part of the historical landscape in this country. And for me, that's not a recipe for recrimination. It's, it's a basis for genuine reconciliation. But without that dialogue, there can't be reconciliation. So I think it's time that, that New Zealanders fronted up to this history. So not just cherry picking the good stuff out of our history or the things that might make us feel warm and fuzzy or patriotic, but you know, acknowledging the bad stuff as well. That's just what a mature country does, I think.